hopefully you guys can learn something uh, using some artificial baits in the springtime for walleye. So make sure you subscribe. I'm going to be putting out more walleye videos, also some more trout videos. And follow me on Instagram as well. Alright, it's a few days after the walleye opener up here in Michigan. Uh, something I like to do instead of using live bait, I use a lot of artificial baits. Big producer for me in the springtime are jerk baits. Like this is a Rapala X Rap. That's a river perch color. I just I kill them with this. I don't know why. Um, but if that doesn't work, jerk baits, uh, then I switch to smaller swim baits. And then if that doesn't work, then they're not eating. Got one right there. That was first cast along these, the brush here. It's a decent sized fish. It's pulling drag for sure. Well, it might be a walleye. What is that? Couldn't quite tell. Might be a small pie. Oh, it's a walleye. Look at that. It's a nice size one. Oh, he T-boned it. Over here. Chunky one for sure. I gotta let some line out. Yeah, it was first cast along the the, the flooded brush. And a lot of people they fish uh, kind of dainty for walleye. I gotta grab my pliers. They're predator fish. I mean, you could see the teeth on them. I mean, they're they're predator fish, so they're gonna be on the prowl. Some people are always fishing with like floating jig heads. Uh, people fishing with floating jig heads and all that kind of stuff, I mean, that works in the summertime. But fall time and springtime like this, uh, definitely they're on the prowl. They're looking to feed. All right, it's not really bleeding all that bad. I'm going to let it go. There she goes. Not, not very often you see uh, somebody from the UP let a keeper walleye go. I guess I'm one of the exceptions, but... A lot of times it's school up this time of year, and I'm just going to do the same exact cast and let's see what happens. I just cast right along this flooded brush. And it's jerking it along. I can just let it pause. Especially if I know it's a high, if it's a high percentage area. up in front of me it could have been a pike though and one nice size walleye all right the sun's going down pretty quick uh it's going down over the tree line over there so it's going to be that magical time right now that people a lot of people they go out walleye fishing it just as it's getting dark they're just slam your lure for about a half hour then sometimes the bite just stops so we're here at the perfect time i can actually see the sun going down right now through the trees but i'm not gonna waste any more time I'm just gonna get right to fishing Again, there's a flooded brush that comes out into the water a little bit. Hopefully, I don't snag it. And the same thing, I'm looking for those active fish. I'm not like uh, fishing leeches on floating jig heads on the bottom or throwing a bobber with uh, a minnow. I'm looking for the ones that are actually feeding. And then if this doesn't work, then I'll, I'll switch to some slower techniques. Or maybe even the Rappel or Rip and Wrap. That's usually one of my go-to lures for walleye. Got excited there for a second. I, I nicked a bush and I thought it was a hit. I guess that leads into another good point too that sometimes with the jerk bait, you'll definitely feel like on a pause, something hits it. And if they don't really take away with it, like, like what I do, I reeled my slack down to see if they got it, then I set the hook. Because whether they're schooled up or even if they're by themselves, sometimes if they don't get hooked, they'll come back and hit it again. Or like I said, if they're schooled up, the first, first fish misses it, then the second fish ends up getting it. 
that's especially true with uh, schooling smallmouth. You'll see them, you'll see them come right up to the boat with uh, about two or three buddies with them. Sometimes you can double hook next to it, um, but a lot of times they're just trying to steal the lure out of each other's mouths. So I'm gonna throw a few more casts right down this brush line here. It's pretty flooded. Uh, it's, it's a pretty good producing spot. It's a good ambush point for them. Especially how the railroad tracks come down. It drops down to seven feet like pretty quick. Uh, so they're probably gonna be uh, hiding out in that brush or chasing stuff that's hiding out in that brush like small perch and stuff like that. And again, I'm just gonna pause right here. Maybe jerk back a little bit. That, that walleye I caught was uh, pretty aggressive. Um, I, was, I was jerking it pretty hard and then that's when it came. Now if the water is like super cold, I mean, you wanna have really long pauses. Sometimes, sometimes I'll pause for like 30 seconds between each little jerk. Especially if I know if it's a hot area, like it's, there's a nice little dip that comes down up on like a shallow fleeting, uh, feeding flat. I just bomb a few casts out there. Right on top of those weeds that I know that are out there. And there's no like set cadence either. I mean, some people will do like a set cadence the entire time. I find sometimes they want it really fast. Sometimes they want it slow. Sometimes they want like long strokes. Sometimes they want short strokes. I, I moved on to a shallow end. Uh... Well, it's a little bit deeper now because the water levels, but I got a train coming, so I don't want to be standing too close to the tracks. But I've caught, I've caught some uh, decent walleye out of this shallow spot over here. So let's see what happens. So a lot of times the shallow water, what I do is um, when I cast a lure, I mean mainly top water, but jerk baits too, I cast and I let it sit there. That way, like, all the fish around the area are going to look at, up and they're gonna know that something is in their area a lot a lot easier than if it was deeper water. Oh got ooh, got one right there. Small one. What is that? What is small? I don't it looked kinda of weird, I don't know what it was, but <clears throat> I kinda of watch while I'm casting this reel kinda of throws the lure out there pretty good. I swallowed a bug when I was walking over here. Yeah, the reel I'm using is the Steez CT SVTW. It just came out. Um, oh, wait, I got my hooks messed up. I think it definitely casts uh, a little bit better than the, uh, the other Steez SVTW. It has a little bit smaller spool. I went over in different videos like that. Um, but for the short range casting, it definitely launches the lures out there. Like I have to like stop it with my thumb a lot of times. And the train's coming, so you'll have a brief little uh, no audio break. I'll keep the camera going though. Actually, it looks really cool when you have a train come by. Like if this water is glass and you're on a kayak, it looks like you're almost moving backwards. It's really weird. Got the one walleye so far. Had a couple strikes too. All on just using a jerk bait. I know a lot of guys they want to troll around with crawler harnesses, uh, use minnows on a slip bobber, or have uh, leeches up off the bottom. But definitely in the springtime and the fall time, I really urge you to use moving baits. Whether it's just regular crank baits, use jerk baits like this. Pretty much anything that's going to get a reaction strike out of them. And then, yeah, su summertime, yeah, you could use that other stuff that might be more effective than, than doing this. But, um, I don't know, I, it's never failed me. And it's something that a lot of people around here don't do. So you're doing something a little bit different that the fish haven't seen. 
But if you want to see more stuff like this, uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Also, you can follow me on Instagram. That link will be down below. Post pictures of fish and kind of how I catch them, stuff like that. And I'm also pretty active on there as well. So if you uh, send me a DM or like, you know, a direct message, I'll answer it for sure. So um, make sure you follow me on Instagram. And again, thanks for watching.